My name is Dr. Erin Lord Koontz, and in this video, we will be talking about APA documentation style in the seventh edition. We will be talking about three items specifically, and when you work with any documentation style, you will be always considering these three items, formatting, in-text citations, and references. So we will take each item piece by piece in order to examine them a little bit more closely. The first item is formatting. So this is what the paper actually looks like when you put it into your document. You will notice that it is quite different than sixth edition. So for student papers, you will no longer have the running head at, at the top, which often alleviates a lot of concerns for students as that was a little bit tricky getting that running head throughout the paper. But now you only need to have the title of your paper and the information from your specific class. You should also use an accessible font, which means that it's a readable font. And in this case, we have Times New Roman 12 point font and you should have one inch margins on all sides. The second item is in-text citations. This is where you provide the information for any quotes or paraphrases you use in your paper. In APA, they put precedent on the year something is published. So you will see throughout all of these examples that you will find the year if it is available. In the first example, we have direct quotes. So this is when you're taking the exact language from a researcher or an author and you are quoting it in your paper. You can either split the citation as you see in the first example because you have Smith, the author's name in the signal phrase, or if you don't have the author's name in the signal phrase, you can keep everything together in the citation at the end but it goes quotation mark, citation, period, in that order. And the way to remember that is you only put words in quotation marks that actually come from another source. So you would never put your citation in the quotation mark because you wrote it. So that's one way to remember what should be in the quotation marks and what shouldn't be. When you are paraphrasing, you don't have to insert the page number. You can just insert the name of the author and the year. And then finally, if you are using a quotation that is 40, 40 words or more, I have an example here from Purdue Online Writing Lab of what this actually looks like, and you indent a half inch over, and you have it in a block. And you will see here that you actually put the page number outside of the period at the end. Finally, we will look at references. Now, references is something that is a little tricky to talk about in a video like this because depending on the type of reference you have, whether it's a journal article, a website, an image, all of these entries are going to be drastically different. So APA tries to give examples of every single possible source that you could use from YouTube videos to, again, journal articles, books, but there are new sources coming out all the time. So if you can't find an exact fit, finding a best fit is the next best option. There are some commonalities though with all of the sources. So you'll notice that authors always come first or the author, um, organizational author if it's that case. And in APA, you don't write the full first name, you always use the initial. And the year of publication always comes near the front of the entry as well. Also note that this is in Times New Roman 12 point font. It's in alphabetical order and references is bolded on top and centered. It's double spaced all the way through. Make sure it's not quadruple spaced between entries, but just double spaced all the way through. And again, it's important to consult a reference guide for your specific source and it will give you a template for how to enter the information for your specific source. This was a quick guide for using APA in the seventh edition. I definitely recommend using the online writing lab at Purdue for more information. And thank you for joining me today.